Let's start with the nuisance and slowly work our way towards the fish that are actively re-engineering entire ecosystems for the worse. Number 7. The European Green Crab Alright, first things first. Is it technically a fish? No. Does it care? Also no. This absolute gangster of the coastline has been nominated as one of the 100 worst invasive species in the world. Originally from the coasts of Europe and North Africa, this crab is a world-class hitchhiker. For over 200 years, it has been catching rides in the ballast water of ships, colonizing coastlines from North America to Australia to Japan. The problem is, it has an insatiable appetite for, well, everything, but it especially loves shellfish clams, mussels, oysters, and even other smaller crabs. It rips them open with its claws and devours them, destroying entire shellfish beds that are vital for local ecosystems and billion-dollar fishing industries. So once again, our brilliant solution is to just eat the problem until it goes away. Number 6. The Lionfish if there was a contest for the most ridiculously overdressed villain, the lionfish would win, hands down. With its glamorous stripes and what looks like a punk rock haircut made of venomous spines, it's the rock star of the sea. Unfortunately, it has the attitude of one too, trashing every hotel room it checks into. Native to the warm waters of the Indo-Pacific, this fish had no business being in the Atlantic. So how did it get there? You guessed it. Us. In the 1980s, it's widely believed that a few careless aquarium owners in Florida got tired of their high-maintenance pet and thought the ocean was just a bigger fish tank. Turns out, that was a terrible idea. In the Atlantic and the Caribbean, the lionfish found itself in paradise. No natural predators and a buffet of native fish that had never seen a predator that looked like a walking feather duster. Lionfish are voracious eaters, hoovering up dozens of small fish and crustaceans every single day. They're so effective, a single lionfish can wipe out over 75% of a reef's juvenile fish population in just a few weeks. And the best part? A single female can lay up to 2 million eggs per year. So what's the brilliant human solution to this problem we created? Simple. We hunt them with spears and then we eat them. So if you ever see lionfish on a menu, go ahead and order it. Number 5. The Northern Steakhead Now, as a general rule, fish are supposed to stay in the water. It's kind of their whole deal. But apparently, the northern snakehead never got that memo. This is a fish that can breathe atmospheric air, survive on land for up to four days, and wriggle its way to the next body of water. Yes, you heard that right. It's a walking, air-breathing fish. Originally from Asia, the snakehead likely made its way into North American waters through live food fish markets, or, once again, someone's brilliant idea of a home aquarium pet. It gained international fame back in 2002 when a man in Maryland dumped his unwanted snakeheads into a local pond. What followed was a full-blown media panic. And for good reason. The northern snakehead is the top-level predator with a mouthful of sharp teeth, an aggressive attitude, and an appetite for absolutely everything. Other fish, frogs, crayfish, even small birds and mammals that get too close to the water's edge. In its new home, it has no natural predators and reproduces faster than you can say ecological disaster. For most fish, the policy is catch and release. For the snakehead, the official policy is more like catch and terminate with extreme prejudice. Number 4. The Silver Carp This is the only fish on our list that doubles as an unguided, scaly missile. You've seen the videos, boaters cruising down a river when suddenly the water erupts into a frenzy of flying fish, so how did this airborne menace take over America's heartland? Well, it started in the 1970s with a brilliant idea. Catfish farmers imported them to clean algae out of their ponds, an all-natural, low-cost solution. What could go wrong? Floods. That's what went wrong. The carp escaped into the Mississippi River and found a paradise with no predators and endless food. The real problem isn't their jumping, it's their appetite. They are filter-feeding machines, eating colossal amounts of plankton, the very bottom of the food chain. They essentially starve out the babies of every native fish species, collapsing the entire ecosystem from the ground up. The fear is that they'll reach the Great Lakes, a multi-billion dollar fishing industry. To stop them, authorities have built electric barriers in the canals near Chicago, basically a giant underwater bug zapper to keep them out. So you have a fish that starves the locals, poses a legitimate physical threat to boaters, and resists capture by literally flying away. Number 3. The Zebra Mussel 
Okay, okay, I know, it's another one that isn't technically a fish, but trust me, when something causes this much chaos, it deserves a spot on any most wanted list regardless of its species. Unlike the other brutes on our list, the zebra mussel is tiny, usually no bigger than your thumbnail, but what it lacks in size, it makes up for with sheer overwhelming numbers and an unstoppable desire to attach itself to literally everything. Originating from the Caspian and Black Seas in Eurasia, these tiny terrors hitched a ride in the ballast water of a transatlantic ship and were unceremoniously dumped into the Great Lakes in the 1980s. The devastation they cause is twofold. First, they are filter feeders on an industrial scale. A single mussel can filter a liter of water per day, and their colonies contain trillions of individuals. They strip so much plankton from the water that the entire food web starves. They make the water unnaturally clear, which sounds nice, but it's the ecological equivalent of clear-cutting the microscopic forest that everything else depends on. But the real nightmare is economic. They attach to any hard surface, pipes, boat holes, docks, shopping carts, even other native mussels. So while other invasives are flashy predators, the zebra mussel is a silent, microscopic plague that literally cements over an entire ecosystem and then hands you the bill. Number two, the sea lamprey. Forget sharks, forget piranhas. If you want a real life aquatic nightmare, look no further than the sea lamprey. This thing is a living fossil, an ancient eel-like parasite that hasn't changed much in 360 million years. It's a jawless fish with a suction cup mouth filled with concentric rings of razor-sharp teeth and a file-like tongue. Its entire purpose is to latch onto other fish, rasp a hole in their side and drink their blood and bodily fluids until the host fish weakens and dies. It is without a doubt the vampire of the Great Lakes. Originally from the Atlantic Ocean, the lamprey was a saltwater creature, but when humans built canals like the Welland Canal in the early 20th century to bypass Niagara Falls, we accidentally rolled out the red carpet for this monster to enter the largest freshwater system on Earth. And it went on an absolute rampage. Before the lamprey, the Great Lakes had a massive, thriving population of lake trout. Within a few decades, the lamprey had destroyed them. A single lamprey can kill up to 40 pounds of fish in its lifetime. They were so effective they wiped out the commercial lake trout fishery almost entirely, collapsing the ecosystem. For the last 60 years, the US and Canada have been locked in a permanent war against them. They use special chemicals called lamprecides to kill the larvae in rivers and build barriers to block the adults from spawning. It's a constant, expensive battle we can never stop fighting, all because we opened the wrong door. And finally, the number one most invasive fish destroying the planet, the Nile perch. This isn't a story of an accidental stowaway or a careless pet owner. This is the story of a well-intentioned ecological improvement that turned into one of the most catastrophic biological disasters of the 20th century. This is what happens when humans decide to play God with an ecosystem. The scene is Lake Victoria in Africa, one of the largest freshwater lakes on Earth. For thousands of years, it was home to an explosion of biodiversity, including over 500 species of vibrant cichlid fish that evolved right there in the lake and existed nowhere else. Then, in the 1950s, someone had a brilliant idea. The local fish were too small for a major commercial fishing industry. The solution? Introduce a giant, fast-growing predator that would be great for business. Enter the Nile perch. The plan was simple. Big fish equals big money. For a few years, nothing happened. Then the perch population exploded, and it began to eat. It didn't just eat some of the native fish, it ate almost all of them. It's estimated that the introduction of the Nile perch is directly responsible for the extinction of over 200, let me repeat that, 200 unique species of cichlid fish. It was a mass extinction event caused by a single fish. The ripple effects were biblical. The cichlids used to eat algae, keeping the lake's water clear, Without them, the lake became choked with algal blooms, creating vast, oxygen-deprived dead zones. The entire ecosystem and the human societies that depended on it were transformed forever. The Nile Perch in Lake Victoria is the ultimate cautionary tale. It's a permanent reminder that when we try to improve on nature with a simple, brilliant idea, the consequences can be more complex and destructive than we could ever imagine. Sometimes the biggest monsters aren't the ones with sharp teeth, but the ones born from our own best intentions. So what should we investigate for our next video? Let us know your best ideas in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss whatever we tackle next. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.